Hey guys and welcome to Petrol Pen. So today I am in the front seat of the very latest Range Rover and this is the autobiography model so the kind of top spec you can get is the V8 diesel and we've got it for the weekend and we're going down to Cornwall for a bit of a road trip. So I thought it might be a bit different to do a bit of a living with uh, video and just talk around some of the technology and spec in this car. I'm, I'm in the passenger seat at the moment and I'm going to talk about some of the really cool things I've got here. Um, I've got Mrs. Petroped driving and, and I've had to promise to keep her off camera so uh, she'll be um, scaring the life out of me as we go down to Cornwall. Uh, and I've even got the dog in the back and she's actually fast asleep. So um, let's head down to Cornwall. We'll have a good chat through the car, talk about what it's like to live with, talk about what it's like to drive um, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Next stop, Cornwall. got a bit of a crisis we've we've pushed a button somewhere and uh, mrs petroped is getting a lumbar massage on her back and we don't know how to turn it off <laughs> that's really funny uh, is it nice it's nice she's enjoying it <laughs> mind you three hours of lumbar massage is going to be really dull um, right i'll see if i can find a way to turn it off because I can actually watch telly in the front seat of this car. So we've got the sat nav screen, but it's one of these dual screens. So whilst the driver will look at it from the right hand side and see sat nav, I can look at it from my side and see the telly. Two hours in and this is a very, very comfortable place to be. Um, I'm loving the tech in the car. I kind of gave up watching the telly because all I could find on there was Donald Trump. Um, Mrs. Petroped's quite happy because she's had a, a, a nice back massage a couple of times, although we can't actually work out how we turned it on or how we turned it off. Um, and the performance is quite something else. Um, we are averaging, if I just quickly check on the old um, trip computer, um, the, the <laughs> your driving style's um, a bit aggressive, so so the uh, the the <laughs> yeah very hard on the accelerator driving style, and only 48% summary altogether. And so far we have got what's our average M 28 mpg, which I guess isn't too bad. But it's a pokey car, this can't wait to get to driving. What do you think of the Range Rover then, Darcy Bear? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought. Just chilling out in the back. Thank you. 
So we've just filled up from literally fumes empty. I put 85 quid in it and I, 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 it would have taken more, but I just can't get my head around spending that kind of money on petrol. So um, it's nearly full. It's one marker away from it being a full tank. So let's see how far that gets us. That's a big fuel tank there. So I've managed to escape from family duties for an hour just to talk you through what this car's like to drive. Now, I don't know if you've ever driven a 4x4. Um, you'll probably know I had a, I've had a Discovery and a Range Rover Sport before. So I'm used to that kind of big car elevated driving position. And I've driven some other big 4x4s recently. This is a big 4x4. There's no doubt, it feels massive. Um, it really, really is a big car. You get used to the size very quickly, but it is huge. And it's little things, so bearing in mind I'm trying to talk about what it's like to live with such a big car, the one thing that you will notice when you have a car this size is when you go shopping or you go into a town, the big worry is, where am I gonna park? You know, can I find a car parking space big enough? Um, is the, um, are there gonna be kind of height restrictions um, because some car parks, you know, you maybe got one meter 90 or two meter height restriction and although you can drop the suspension in this car, you might find that sometimes you can't get into uh, car parks. So it is a big car. However, that huge size isn't translated into the way it feels to drive. It really feels very nimble. It's got a stonking big V8 diesel engine under the bonnet, loads of power. Um, the road holding and poise of this car is well, quite frankly, unbelievable. It's such a big old um, heifer, this, but look at this. I've got this nice little twisty Cornish lane to, to, to go through, and it just goes around corners brilliantly, absolutely brilliantly. Um, and on the motorway, it just sits there, and it trucks along, and it cruises, and it really is a very, very impressive car, this. It's really not a very nice day today, but I've parked up so we can take a look around the outside of this car. As I said, full-blown Range Rover, the autobiography spec, something like a hundred thousand quids worth of car. I can see I've got rain forming on my lens already, which isn't great, but absolutely beautiful. It has been put through its paces a little bit, this car. It is filthy. The roads around here are just covered in that kind of winter mud and grime. Um, but I guess, you know, it should look like that. It's a four by four. But let's have a look, there's some really very, very funky, cool features on this car. There we go, we've opened up the back of this famous kind of Range Rover split tailgate. Um, and you've got the kind of famous seat you can whoop, sit on when you're, when you're hunting or shooting or whatever. Um, huge amount of space in this boot. It's cavernous really. I mean, obviously we've got our stuff from the weekend. Um, but everything in this car is assisted. You don't kind of do anything manually. And you've got a couple of buttons down here, which don't look all that, but basically um, I've got, you can drop the rear seats with motor assistance. What you can't probably see from there, the front seat actually moves forward to allow that seat to drop, and then you can put it back up again. I just think that's brilliant, that's just so lazy. And then the other thing, if I just close this tailgate here, which, um, and then I've basically got down here, something very cool. Oh yeah, power tow hook. So, I don't know, if you want to hitch up your horse box, literally at the touch of a button, there you go, all done. Beeps and it's in place, and you've got your electrics there. Absolutely brilliant. And again, you can just put that back at the touch of a button. So it really is, you know, the ultimate in kind of luxury. Everything is, is power. 
and it should just, yep, that's latched. And then to close it, just push that button there, and there you go. We're all closed. Fantastic. This cabin is a very, very special place to be. Um, I'll try and do my best to kind of just show you a bit. The, the TFT screen, um, so all your kind of odometer, rev counter, is all done through a TFT screen. You've got this main central um, management zone here, um, which has got this very clever split uh, vision, so the passenger and the driver see different things. Um, and then we've got the kind of climate control center, and then down here, this is basically where you control the terrain response system. So this is a full-blown 4x4. The, the big thing they've always said about Range Rover is it, this is a proper 4x4. So we've basically got the full terrain response system here with all the different modes. Um, you can push that back and you've got some cup holders and things, which is quite nice. But yeah, very, very pleasant place to be. Uh, beautiful steering wheel. It's quite thin, um, but, but I quite like that in a way. And there's just leather everywhere very very special it's a very nice car this for me this car is is not a car to really kind of it's not a performance car you're not going to really uh, go for it so it's got a beautiful eight-speed zf auto gearbox with a rotational selector i do have sport mode uh, and if i drop it into sport mode again push it down and just twist it if you're familiar with jaguar land rover gearboxes i've got a little bit more um sportier response to the throttle um, and you know I can kind of it, it's certainly a car if you wanted to just sort of you know push on down a bit of a twisty road you could do that and and that that's quite nice of sport mode I've also got the flappy paddles so I can drop it into flappy paddle mode um, sorry command shift um, now the interesting thing about the flappy paddles having done the Land Rover off-road course is the main time you would use those flappy paddles is off-road. So you basically put it into manual box and you use them to stay in gear, maybe first, second, third gears uh, is what you would use quite regularly. Um, but yeah, they're very, very nice kind of drive. I'll stick it back into drive as we drive down this absolutely beautiful, beautiful road. We've got the ocean in front of us. Yeah, a really lovely place to drive. Um, you know, lovely kind of doesn't feel like a big car though that's the most amazing thing for me so I bought it shopping and here's a really really good example of what I was talking about size of parking space there you go see I am pretty much smack bang in the middle of this parking space. I couldn't go back any further if I walk around this side. I'm still sticking out the front. You just have to be really on it. You have to find the right parking space. All the parking aids help, but it's a big old car. Oh yeah, another petrol station. That was from half, so I reckon this bad boy is around about a hundred quid to fill up. So, again, you don't buy one of these if you're an eco warrior and you don't want to spend lots of money on diesel. That said, it's not too bad in terms of fuel economy from a uh, you know MPG point of view, but it does light a petrol station. What I do love, which I've just found, is this little central console here. If I pop this open. Um, you've got a couple of things. You've got a power supply and USB points. There's a little slidey in kind of iPhone holder just there. And then also, if I open up this, that is a chiller compartment. Oh yeah, where well, you can keep your, I don't know, gin and tonic, half bottle of champagne. Keep it nice and cool for your journey. I just love things like that. about so 
we've got the key here, and obviously it's a keyless go car. Um, but this key fob is very cool. So this has got the kind of climate pack on it, and we have the same feature when we had our Range Rover. So in the morning, if you press this little on button and point it at the car, what that basically does is it turns on all the climate control in the car, and warms the car up inside, it demists the windscreen, it's got a heated steering wheel as well, so it warms all that up. So on cold winter's days, that is the coolest key fob you can have on your Range Rover key. Okay, so we are on our way home. We've still got quite a long way to go, but I thought I'd sort of um, give you my final impressions of this car. It's been really, really interesting living with this car for the weekend. Um, it's a hugely impressive vehicle. I mean, yes, it's a big car, but it's a big scopey car. It's got lots of very impressive features. It's so relaxing to drive. And actually on this kind of journey home, um, obviously Mrs. Petroped's driving at the moment, but kind of comes into its own. The weather's really, really taken a turn for the worse. Very heavy rain, um, but it's just so easy and relaxing to cover large distances in this car. And, and I kind of now understand why the Range Rover has that position of being the premium, um, not just premium SUV, but just premium uh, luxury car. It does everything so well. It's supremely comfortable. It's massively practical. It's got a huge boot. I mean, obviously we haven't taken it off-road at all, but it's very capable off-road kind of ticks every box. So really, really enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed um, kind of coming along on our journey. I know it's a slightly different style of video for me, but when I knew we were gonna have the car for the weekend, I thought it'd be really nice to, to sort of see what it's like to live with. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have done so, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. I'm going to relax, chill out, I might even get my headphones out and watch a bit more TV uh, before I have to swap over and sort of finish off the driving um, to get home. Anyway, you take care guys, I'll see you on the next video. Drive safe.